Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Well, it's not morning. It's five to five in the afternoon. But I can't help but say good morning, ladies and gentlemen, every time I pick up the camera. So what we're doing in the brewery today, well, um, I've basically uh, been selling a little bit of beer to Nottinghamshire uh, Robin Hood Craft Beer and Cider Festival. So if you're in the area on from Wednesday the 12th of October through to the weekend of that week, You'll be able to try some of my beer on there. Uh, we're sending some Sabro. We're sending some proof of concept. Oh, proof of concept. Um, we're sending some Ruby Mild and a Porter as well. And also, as you know, um, our good friend Andy over at Four Priest Brewery. Guess what? He's also going to be featured at Nottingham Robin Hood's Beer and Cider Festival as well. So that's two smashing breweries that you're going to get to try. And uh, I'm going to be there on the Friday as well, fingers crossed, if all pans out, with Andy. We're going to meet up and uh, hopefully have a good session and talk beer. So, talking beer, okay. Started to make these two new um, limited edition beers uh, before I went on holiday the other week. So we got to sample these hops, Sabro and Idaho 7, which I've never used before. And boy, let me tell you, they are good hops. Some of the best hops I've used, actually. Now, what I want to talk about next is uh, related to both of these beers that we made. But I've got some of this Sabro in a glass, so it's just here. Now, let me show you this. I just want to point out how susceptible certain beers are to oxidation when they don't have a 60 minute, 30 minute, 15 minute, or even any boil additions of hops in there. So, another tangent. I've got the recipe here for the Idaho 7. Now these two recipes are basically the same. The only thing I changed out was, of course, the hop that went in there. And if you have a look, the very, very first hop addition on this beer is the steep 30 minute Whirlpool and we put quite a chunk in. So this recipe has been scaled down to 25 litres and I'll tell you for why in a moment. But 218 grams going in the Whirlpool and then in the dry hop you can see there's quite a dump of 250 grams going in there. And we also used a saturated yeast which is something new to us too. So what I normally do on these big beers with big hop additions but no boil additions I'll add some vitamin C some ascorbic acid and the ascorbic acid will go in as secondary or as close to packaging as we can work it now we forgot to do it on this beer and you can tell so it might look great to you but uh, if you look at the brew kit behind the image there or indeed our friendly fermenter mascot the beer was closer to that color when we packaged it and as you can see it's now looking a little bit more like what you describe as a weak tea that is a little bit of oxidation during packaging which has made that happen and if we'd have put in just a small amount 20 grams per 500 liters of ascorbic acid that would have mitigated that from happening altogether now the beer itself, and I've been drinking it, is not showing any signs of oxidation over the flavour profile or the aroma. It just seems to have impacted the appearance. So we've dodged a bullet here. And I had something similar a couple of years ago when we produced the Bernie Sanders and the Bjorn Again New England IPAs. And of course when you've got a lot of yeast in suspension, it makes the colour change even worse because it makes it look a little bit muddy so uh, this is a from what I'm looking at on my viewfinder on the screen is a generally good visual indicator of what I'm actually seeing with my naked eye so it'll give you an idea as to the importance of either um, a boil addition for those preservative qualities from the hops or fail that bit of good old 
ascorbic acid, vitamin C, and if you've never seen it before, this is how it comes. It is basically just like citric acid, a white crystalline solid granules or powder, and yeah, it's basically vitamin C. Available from Amazon or eBay or any of your preferred dodgy online shops or chemists even maybe. So one of the reasons why we've got this recipe printed out is because some of you may have noticed over the past couple of days there's been a video posted on YouTube by um, one of our less frequently seen brew tubers as of late indeed Mr. New to Homebrew Tom has posted an update so I'd recommend you go along to his channel and have a look at it and tell him to pull his finger out where has he been so we've been talking and uh, of course he's built this lovely brewery and uh, I've helped him wire it up and he's moved out since and changed careers and a lot's been going on he's not had time to christen the thing yet so we intend to meet up next Saturday and that will be uh, what we're on today is Monday I think that's the 27th of August over at his house we're going to have a barbecue weather permitting and we're going to brew this Idaho 7 single hot beer because I think it's smashing he's not had a chance to try it so we're going to take over enough ingredients for a Tom to make this beer on the day um, but what we're going to do is we're going to up it to 6% mine came out at 3.9 we're going to boost this to 6% so it's going to be quite important for us, I think. I'll also take over with me a little bit of ascorbic acid so Tom can indeed stave off any rogue oxidation. Of course, he can do a closed transfer with his system, but I'm not sure if he'll actually have any CO2 or not. I'll have to ask him. Either way, I'll take it just to be on the safe side. So what I want you guys to do, of course, is keep liking, keep subscribing, because there's more videos coming soon and of course the big one which is going to be me and Tom making this Idaho 7 American Pale and christening his brew kit finally after all this time so uh, we'll see you on the weekend for that video over on Tom's channel and there might be a little bit going up on mine as well but until then folks cheers and uh, well, keep your mugs full as they say Oh, lovely.